Hello, in this video, we'll take a look at the data offered by Companies House. If you're watching, you're likely aware that Companies House is a government agency and its job is to register and maintain information on companies in the UK. Lucky for us, much of the data is available to the public. We'll make a few queries and explore what the service has to offer. To start with, I'd like to show you a visualization I use to investigate the growth of my local tech industry using data from Companies House. Now this featured in a presentation I gave to a local meetup group called Edinburgh JS, and it's online to watch if you'd like. So it's a spiral histogram or condogram showing incorporation dates um, of software companies in Edinburgh between, um, I believe it's the beginning of the 1980s to um, summer of 2021. Companies also um, categorize themselves using what are called SIC codes, so we know whether they claim to operate in any other industries aside from tech and software, because companies can assign themselves uh, multiple SIC codes. So you can see whether it's like software and finance or software and business management, etc. So further to this, Companies House also tells us the residencies of directors. So I've just demonstrated this using flags in this table that you can find below um, the main kind of condogram. This information is usually of interest to journalists so they can tell if companies are, are kind of shell companies and uh, if nobody's a resident here in the UK. This visualization uses only a few bits and pieces available to us through Companies House. In this case, incorporation dates, current company status, registration address, director residency, and industry classification codes. Now, the SIC codes, if you're not familiar with them, are a means of, um, probably as kind of explained but already, but they're a, means, a standard means of classifying um, business by their activities. There are about 600 SIC codes, and some are far more specific than others. And if you'd like more detail on that, you can go to uh, this site and I, in fact, get a preview of what, what sort of SIC codes are available. And there's also a spreadsheet that's available to download that provides you with the whole list, plus descriptions of the categories and subcategories and the rationale for them. Aside from um, SIC codes and what I've mentioned there for the visualization, there's a lot more that Companies House can provide us with. Uh, so you can get company type, company filing history, shareholding, and director roles. There are a few ways of accessing data from Companies House. The first is by using um, this web interface to search companies and the records. So if you look up the company information service and you just type in something into the search bar here, you can search using the simple search to get companies by their name. And if you drill down, we can find filing history and people and the nature of business, uh, which is the SIC, as mentioned here. And there's a few other things that you can do, um, ordering a company snapshot and whatnot. Now that was me just doing the basic company search. If we do an advanced company search and do the same thing again, The search results will appear with further filters, but most important, we get a button here that says download results. And from there, we can download the results in a CSV file and open it as a spreadsheet. Now, no, only the first 5,000 results can be downloaded. So if we want to go past that and actually get our data and downloaded into a file um, beyond the first 5,000, we've got to start thinking about using the API and paging beyond um, those first 5,000 results. But that's something we're going to take a look at. But let's first take a look at the CSV file that we get back. So I've opened it up in my um, spreadsheet program, LibreOffice, and we can see some of the obvious attributes we'd expect to find. Company name, company number, status, whether it's active or dissolved, the company type, whether it's like a, 
limited liability partnership, a private limited company. Uh, there's not much in the way here of a company subtype. Oh, I notice here that I've not used the string delimiter. So when you open up a CSV file, it asks you how to parse it. Uh, one of the options is the string delimiter, and I've not said that um, text with commas should be uh, sort of extracted using the quotation marks as indicating a single string, a single field. So I should open this up again. But anyway, for the purposes of this, we don't need to do that right now. Um, so dissolution dates, incorporation dates, and removes registered nature of business. So that's where the SIC codes come in. Um, no, you can get multiple, but they are just jammed into the same field, right? So if we want to pick out individual ones uh, in code, then we'll need to split that using the space character. Um, then we get a registered office address and it's hanging off the end here because of that string delimitation thing. And that's it. So if we want to enrich and have a spreadsheet that has some of those other details that I mentioned um, or you can see when you select an individual company, then you have to think about using the API to hit the company resource individually for each one of these companies and then um, collect that into a data set and then write that to a file. So that's something we're going to look at doing in a moment. But first, we need to register ourselves um, in order to use the API. Okay, so here I am looking at the Companies House Developer Hub. This is where you come to find the API documentation, but also to sign in and register your application before you actually start making any requests. An application, in our case, we're just creating our application in order to get an API key and therefore make some requests. We're not gonna be doing any of the more sophisticated write API operations that you will see in accountancy software, right? So Companies House is there. It provides this API also for, um, if you imagine accountants submitting filings and using it for sort of digital digital governance purposes. In our case, we're just um, ha using the kind of read write. Uh, sorry, we're just using the read operations for searching and looking into company info. So. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole registration process. It's very easy. Uh, I will. You pretty much just need to provide an email and um, and create a password. And once you're signed in, the first thing we'll need to do is create an application. So if we go click create an application, I've called my application create with data. And then when we have to use this, we need to provide a description. Now there are tests and live environments, right? If you are going to try out um, some of the more sophisticated features, then I suggest use uh, the test environment. I'll go for live because then we're getting back some real data and we'll create our application. And when we create our application, the main thing that we need to do is, so we've got a list of applications. Here's the one I just created. The main thing we need to do is to create a key. So our key is for testing out this API. I'm going to select REST. I'm not going to worry about restrictions right now. And the main thing that we get is the API key. So we want to copy this and then use this later on to make any more requests. So if you go on the developer hub and we start to look at the documentation, uh, API authentication is uh, describes how we can use this key. So here they provide an example of using curl, the curl command, and providing the API key to make a request for some company information. And we're going to give that a go. So that's what it looks like. Um, I think I'm, I think there needs to be a space here actually because that is a flag that tells the method we want to use, dash u, um, use username and password. Now this is kind of funny because what's supposed to follow the colon here is a password, but effectively we're using the API key as a username and a password. But anyway, so let's get our 
API key in there and make sure there's not any too many spaces and let's go excellent so we have a result it looks a little bit ugly so I'm going to use I'm going to pipe the result into a into Jello which is a nice kind of formatter for JSON um, responses so here you go Dave creation 1862 wow okay so this is their example um, company and I suppose with Companies House, they've just been increasing the company numbers just started right from the beginning. Um, so you can see the sort of rest schema here, company, here's a resource, and here's the idea of the resource, pretty straightforward. And it also gives you um, a returns list of links. So you can, e you, you can easily sort of figure out, oh, I, that's the next path I need to use if I want to make um, a further request okay let's have a look at the officers so I just need to change the endpoint and here we go we get the names of officers and locations and such that's grand maybe this is a little bit too big here we go uh, so so to get into conducting searches, I'm going to have a look at the API specifications for the public data API. And in here, we get to, I'll show you that again, actually, because it's kind of buried, right? You've got managed applications. This is where you will, what you'll see when you sign in. And then if you go down to API specifications list into the public data API reference, and then we'll have a look at the advanced company search because this is where we get into the meat of things. So the endpoint we use is advanced search companies, right? That's the path. And then we find um, our query parameter. So we put this in the URL itself. So a search might look something like this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use Jello again to make that look a bit prettier. Hooray! We have now got a lot of results. And we have the first thing here, it tells us the top hit. And then we have number of items in a collection in an array here. Uh, I think at the bottom. Yeah, it tells us the number of hits. So we know how many we returned in this in this result set. Now, of course, not all 6,000 are displayed here. I believe there's a default number of results that you get back, about 50, I think. And we can, however, expand the, on the number of results that we can get back. We do this by using the size param. So I've got the ampersand here, size equals, and then we just provide a number. So let's say we want five. We just want the top five. And there we go. A much shorter response. Now, earlier I mentioned that there's only so many results that we can get in one request. So in this case, it would be a maximum of 5,000, which is just like the CSV. We want to go beyond that. We need to start using this start index parameter to page through the different, um, the following results, right? So the next, if we had a size of 5,000, then we can say, I've got the first 5,000, I want the following. So we would set our start index to 5,000. And then if we wanted the page after that, then we would need to say, I've got the first 10,000, actually start giving the results at number 10,000, and so on and so forth. 
So this would give me the top five. If I want to use, uh, I want to get the following index five, I would say five. Now that's not really the most interesting search that we did there. There are a lot of other search parameters we can add to our query. And what I find kind of probably most interesting here is the SIC codes. And that's primarily one of the most important uh, params that I used to create the data set for the visualization. So let's have a look at using that. So here's our base search uh, with EH1 as the location. And I'm going to add in SIC code 6 to 12, which I believe is sort of software related activities. And then back comes a lot of company names with tech and technologies in the names. So that seems about right. Um, now our hits have reduced significantly down to 52. Now I can also provide multiple SIC codes parameters and expand the search. Now notice I said expand the search, not restrict the search. <laughs> the providing multiple SIC codes is is effectively does an or operation in the in this search. It doesn't you don't you're there's no way to say I would like companies to have both these SIC codes. We actually just have to collect them all up and then afterwards in code or maybe using some spreadsheet magic, we can start to refine and uh, restrain our data set, filter through a data set. Now let's switch over to using Python to make some of these requests. So we need an auth token, an endpoint, I'm gonna set these as variables and then I will use HTTPX to make a get request. Now auth, notes here, we provide auth token and then just a blank pass. This is usually it's a username and a password. So we've got a response. Okay. And we can look at the content, big mess of content there. Um, but we're going to use the JSON library to load, parse through all that. And we can get our keys. So result. We have hits. Hooray. In the visualization I demonstrated earlier, we had a table of flags associated with the residencies of owners. Unfortunately, owner residencies don't come with the collection of companies when we request via the API or download a CSV. In order to get this or more data on each company, we either need to manually add them or write a script of some kind to make those requests. In the Edinburgh Tech Company dataset, I had about 5,000 companies listed, so manual wasn't really an option. Now, when I made this visualization, I began to realize that it provides no sense of scale. I don't know if there are large companies with hundreds of employees or whether they are just sole directorships. Companies House doesn't really provide us with this information, but we can easily see the number of owners. On that note, I'd like to inquire into um, the dataset to see if we can figure that one out. So let's take a look at writing a script to extract some more detail from those companies. So here's a script that I've written to augment the data that I already have from conducting a search. Now, in this case, we imagine we're starting from the point of using the CSV download from the advanced search. So what this does is it opens that up. And then what we do is we um, step through every company that we've got, get some extra details on the officers in that company, and then we're going to save that to a new CSV file. So let's take a closer look. The first thing that happens is um, we import a few libraries. HTTPX is a um, HTTP request library. Uh, if you're familiar with requests, it's pretty much um, the same, very much the same kind of syntax. Got JSON because we're dealing with JSON responses that we need to parse. The CSV will help us to open and parse and write, and the time uh, library, which we'll come to. So the very first thing we do is we open the search result CSV, um, just as it is from the advanced search function. 
Um, so what we do is open up the file and you use the file reader and the CSV parsing library will do all the kind of hard work for us and we get this data list. So it's kind of a list of lists, a row of row, uh, so each row in there is a company. Now, one thing you have to watch out for sometimes when you do this is that the very first row will be the header, the column header. So I don't think I got rid of that. So it might come back to bite me. Anyway, um, all we do here is just print out some company numbers, make sure that that worked. The next thing we do is create a new empty list that we're going to append to the and um, to collect up the results from the API. So for every row that we have in that spreadsheet, we're going to get the company number, which is at index number one. And we're going to use that um, to hit the officer's endpoint. Now the response, there's actually no need for this line. Uh, the response comes back in JSON. Um, but it's not parsed, so that's why we're using json.loads. So what that does is it will turn that JSON response into a Python dictionary that we can then key into. Um, now, for whatever reason, the result set with the company officers um, doesn't come back with the company number, so I'm going to just kind of append um, or sort of add a key, a company number key to that dictionary uh, so that we, when we come later to use that in creating our new CSV file, that we know what the company number is. So um, officer results, we add our, we add that result, so we're collected up our results. And now finally, I add a sleep uh, of 2.1 seconds. Now the reason I'm doing this is because if I didn't have it, it would hit the API in quick succession and we would fall foul of um, kind of rate limiting. So we might be shut off. And it's the polite thing to do is not to hit people's servers uh, too much in, in quick succession because um, it can overload some of the resources and whatnot. It's uh, it's not nice. So we're going to add in, I think the rate limit that they suggest is two seconds. We're going to stay on the safe side at 2.1. The next thing that we do is we have our officer results. We have it in a list. We're going to open up a new CSV file. Um, so this doesn't exist. We're going to create it from scratch and we're going to add some headings, company number, the number of active officers and whether we believe it's a sole directorship or not. So for every result that we have in our officer results list, we are going to look at the active count and the resigned count. And we're going to check whether we've only got one active officer and that there are no uh, resigned officers because it might be that, you know, in the past there's other people being involved, in which case this probably indicates that the, that the company is not a sole directorship. Again, this is not perfect logic, but for the purposes of demoing this, I think it will work fine. And then finally, we write that row to the CSV. So we'll have the company number, the active count, the active number of officers at the moment, and the true false on whether we um, think it's a sole directorship or not. So. Uh, let's try this out in Python. So first thing we're doing is opening up that CSV. It looks like that worked. Now I am going to work with a much smaller data set just for the purposes of this run. Oh, we didn't provide an auth token. Um, so we need to do that. Uh, there we go. Okay. So it needs that before it will accept. Our requests. So now it's slowly going through and making those requests. 
Okay, so we've got our officer results. Um, let's just check. Yes, that looks like a lot of data in there. Now, we are going to write our results to a CSV file. Okay, that seems all right. It didn't complain. So I'm gonna quit out of this and open it up in uh, LibreOffice. And here we go. Uh, we have all the results, um, our active officer count, and whether we believe this is a sole directorship. So we have pretty much all of those. Yeah, yeah, that, that looks right. Now, one thing that doesn't look right is, of course, uh, that we our first result is company number. Um, now, this is a mistake in my code where uh, when you open a CSV file, the very first row is, in fact, this header. So we made a request to the API with um, specifying company number, the actual text, as a company number, and we included that in our result set. Now, I would have expected my, um, my code to fall over and error before getting to this stage, but it worked, that's fine, and actually I can just get rid of this and everything's fixed. Now, I have my large CSV file with all the results, and all I need to do is kind of stitch them together uh, using a bit of copy paste or spreadsheet magic, or of course I could have done that in the code as well. But the main thing is we're starting to get some results back out of uh, using the API and aug augmenting um, the data that we already have. Now, that's about it really for me for here, um, but you can guess yourself the where this leads to, because now I could, if I wanted to, it augment that data visualization with the officer counts. And you could imagine in data visualization, kind of way I could maybe express this is by increasing the size of those dots that I had, or perhaps by um, maybe having a completely different uh, visualization altogether. Finally, if you found the video useful and you're doing something with this API, let me know. I would be delighted to hear that people are getting value out of it. And of course, if you have any ideas for a follow-on or um, something else that you would like to see, then I'm all ears.